So this is a tour of the Davis Graveyard Workshop. Um, this is all the projects we worked on during COVID um, in our stay at home weekends and evenings. So hopefully uh, some of this will be informational for all you guys. So this is the entrance into our shop. Um, first thing that we did was we had all these racks but there were three of them. We removed one so that we can move our garbage cans over to the edge here and, and a half of another one. And then we took out a bunch of bins by creating storage here, a shelf unit and some uh, spray can shelves that have these little uh, dividers in between them so you can get two rows of spray cans. So these are all of our spray paint uh, cans and a few extra overflow ones along the side here. Tape dispenser for storing all the different oh, tapes we yeah. have. Oh, yeah. Tape dispenser for all the different ones. So you can pull the tape out and go use it and then just put it back so it's not the kind that you pull off. It's just a, a holder for tape rolls. Mm -hmm. um, we have lots of uh, bins we've always used for storage. Uh, yeah. We kind of resorted. Yeah, the crew even has their own bin, their own names on yeah. So they can store their stuff when they're here. Of course, we had to re we had to move uh, Captain Hammer Startboard. Yes, Captain <laughs> Hammer Startboard uh, got stuck above the electrical panel. Okay. We we added LED lighting throughout the whole shop. You can kind of see all the lighting up everywhere, and then above the garage doors was always a dark spot. So we uh, mounted a set of lighting on some three inch metal studs. Uh, and then just hung the steads with chain under the track so that we get lighting over there too. So this is our, what we call our art cart. Mm -hmm. Has all the miscellaneous art supplies. Some wheels, we can take it anywhere in the shop when we're working, uh, wherever we want it to go. And we kind of reorganized it and made it a little more tidy. And then I added this little thing. Chris can, I think it'll just snap up. So now you have a work surface. Yeah. You have a little work table. When you're out and about and doing something. And you have to do a little... Got your fingers. Okay. And then you've got a nice little flush handle on there so that it doesn't keep the surface flat. Yeah, okay. so you could use that. So uh, the next thing we did was back here, um, what used to be right up next to our stairs was a pile of paint buckets and paint cans. And we always had to move out of the way. Here, you want to hold this and I'll move this? Yeah. Sorry. So we put this, we built this thing so you can put it on wheels and roll it around. And you can kind of see that we put five gallon paint cans in the bottom and one gallon paint cans at the top. And then Chris color coded them so you know what color of paint goes in what bucket. And then we put some miscellaneous dividers up here for paint brushes and everything that you need for painting, mixing bowls, sponges, some scissors, paint stir sticks. And then we built a, uh, a table off this guy too. Exactly the same. same deal, so you could actually mix your paint, store it here. Um, yeah, I've already got paint on it. She's already got paint <laughs> on it. Uh. We put this on wheels for the reason that because the paint always got stacked up in this area right here, it kept us from being able to get to this cart here, which is also a rolly cart for under the stairs, so that you can get to, it's pretty heavy and it's stuck in there, but that is a way that we can get to some of the five gallon paints we don't use so much and some of like burlap and stuff like that and supplies that go in there. So this, now we just can roll this right back like he's going to do and just put it right back where it came from. And we haven't, block the way and made it easy to get into that area if you wanted to get into that area. So behind that up there too is a little, you can't see it, but behind all the fairies is a little diagram of the yard too. <laughs> oh yeah, this is kind of the yard display planning place. Okay. So on the opposite end of the shop is our sink. And this is where a lot of the paint supplies ended up getting backed up. Now that we have the paint cart, we don't need to keep them here as much. And we built a, uh, a custom uh, cabinet for the corner, and it holds paint trays. You want to walk up there and yeah, so demo? Yeah, this is a different, 
during the season we keep a, all instead of cleaning it all the time we keep a paint tray and we keep it in a sealed bag including with a roller in it and it just goes in here so we're on three main colors so we got light gray dark gray and then the black and the metal one and then we have a little jet built a little just thing for rags this is all of our paint rags that we use throughout the season just storage down there for um, just tubs and things like that. That's where our gloves go. And we take kind of like at the doctor's office. And this is our little shelf. He, he just built this, so we're still trying to work out what goes where. And then we have our squirt bottles, uh, water bottles on the left, and bleach water and, and alcohol, alcohol on the right. Um, they're all labeled, so you don't grab the wrong one. Some shelving for miscellaneous stuff. And then this was our second. Uh, cabinet we built, organizing cabinet, kind of the same style as that paint cabinet. Uh, Chris, if you hold it, I'll um, switch with me. I'll pull it out. Um, so this one works the same way. It's on wheels. And it's got... Same thing. Multiple compartments all the way around. You can kind of see all our molding and casting stuff all fits on here um, with, with stuff in the bottom. Uh, the middle section is a cabinet full of little trays that have all of our molds. Oh, my tombstone so accent. these are all tombstone accent molds that we used to have to have in bins and then dig through them, and they really got beat up that way. So these are really shallow, and you can just pull out the mold that you need. Um, There's some room for some extras. Some other molds, some future molds. And so they just... Now you can just do that, and this works the same way. When you need to pour a mold, you just uh, come there with a little. Can't really see it. But there's like Jeff's, a. Jeff's trying to. Same kind of cabinet tape, and then you can pour your mold right here. Mix all your two-part expanding foam. Pop them right. out. And then when you're all done, you can just put this away. So it works the same way as, as the other guys do. And it's and on this wheels. This can be rolled out into the, into the yard or the middle of the shop or wherever you need it for molding. Right, so no more it's stuck in one area. Yeah, perfect. You want to and talk the, about the... Want to talk about the molds up there? The molds up here? My molds, molds for my skulls, different types of skulls. They're molds for different types of skulls that we have. That we've had, some we've had for years and years and years, but now they're labeled so I can grab them because they used to, did all used to be in a bin. And so they're up there now, so I can just grab them and I know which ones wear. And we built this. Uh, yeah. I'll do this one. This uh, rollout cart for the. Um, Sawhorses, just something really simple. We used to just keep them stacked and then we'd pull them out when we needed them, but now you can pull out the whole stack of them and then grab one off the cart real quick. And take them anywhere in the yard, like in the driveway and stuff when we do classes. It's yeah. got hooks on the side for a table that we that we store along with the, the sawhorses. It's currently being used right now to hold some concrete for pouring skulls. And then we used to keep these tarps um, over there in the sh below the shelves where some of those bins are tucked them in there but it was such a pain so we said well let's just build a cart it's that we can stack them in it's all open so you can grab the, the the tarp you need and then we can just slide them back out of our once way once again we can wheel it out to the driveway or wherever we need to go to be working yeah if you need tarps you can just go take them out into the driveway or somewhere in the shop and then this is a rebuild. Um, we've always had a wood cart here. Um, it used to be eight feet long. We cut it down to five feet. And it used to be s uh, stacked sheet goods on both sides. But the sheet goods are now just stacked in the back. You can get up to five feet back there. In the front, we made these bins so you can store cutoff pieces. So there's all kinds of little scraps that we had all over the yard or over the shop that we kind of like organized. Yeah, and it's here. on wheels too. Just like it seems to be a theme we've got going yeah. on here. And we get a little leakage every once in a while in the shop. The foundation's a little wet once in a while when it rains a lot. So it's nice having things on wheels so nothing, none of the wood stuff is touching anything wet. This is uh, the sca uh, Harbor Freight scaffolding that we use uh, during setup and some tables that we use for classes. It's also like where we're currently storing the ladders. <laughs> and then Chris, if you want to hold this, this you'd be camera person. Okay. 
This is the CNC machine uh, from Inventables. It's called the X-Car, and I built a table for it. So the table uh, holds the CNC in place, and then we have a little slide-out table for putting the laptop on that hook it up to it. Uh, and then there's a shelf down below where we store the little mini the laptop, vac. yeah, and the mini vacuum and then supplies, dust collection, and all this, the supplies and bits and stuff for it. But it takes up so much space. Uh, I wanted to set it up on a flip table, kind of like a like an easel that then we can slide and store out of the out of the way. I'll trade you, and you can talk about what's behind it. And then this is the main work table in our shop. Mm -hmm. And this back area had always been kind of a place where stuff went to die. Mm -hmm. And since we were reorganizing the shelves on the other side, Chris can show us how we decided to put all of our paint. This is house paint, miscellaneous paint, miscellaneous colors, um, all kinds of supplies having to do with paint cans. Um, Paint and so, some of our like our paint sprayers now there, and then there's like you know cork board and some miscellaneous corrugated, and some, corrugated plastic and stuff. Or, um, acrylic. Acrylic plastic. And this kind of just keeps it from getting a whole bunch of dust in it when we're making too. If anybody's been here for our tombstone class, it's like foam goes a flying. Yes. So uh, now it's got these these covers over them so that the cans will stay kind of dust free. And then in the shop, we made a bunch of improvements. These uh, bins here, you pull one of them out, Chris. One that looks like it holds a beer bottle. Um, there used to be cubbies down below that I built. Originally, I built the table, and I used to stuff tools in there, but they'd get all dusty, and they were hard to pull out, so I built these, you had these little crates. We need to label them all, but now when you want, like, you're looking for the, the grinder. grinder, the grinder in all of its pieces are in here, and they have handles, so you can take the grinder wherever you need to take the grinder to go work. Yep. And there's, there's some empty ones, so that's why there's one with a bunch of dividers in it. I was just trying to think of things we could do with some of the empty ones. Yeah, but it's but like all my pneumatic um, nail guns and stuff are in one, so you just pop them out when you need it. Yeah, and I think this is where the sander is. Sanders, that's where all the is, sanders are. This is are. like one of the most popular bins is the sander bin, so right there on top. And then we uh, put some shelving on the side, which is currently not being used much right now. And then along this wall is a bunch of carts that we built. So this first one is just... Um, oh, we should tell them what our favorite toy is in the black box there. Oh, the Demand Products uh, Hot Knife. They call it a f uh, field cutter for cutting um, up to 55 inch long, 16 inch deep pieces of foam. It's a very nice tool. I always hate having to pull it out, set it up though. <laughs> this uh, little bin here is just all the metal stock miscellaneous pipes that end up stick showing up in the shop. I just built something on wheels I could roll around and pull out what I need. This is a little hardwood storage um, con cool. container. I, I built that years and years ago and I've just had it ever since. This has got little scraps of pieces of hardwood. And I built this uh, um, drill press cabinet, uh, mounted the drill press onto it, and then it's got three deep drawers and this one's got some 3d printed drill bit organizers that i just got recently um, and a couple of wooden organizers that i built myself so it's got three of these nice roll out drawers for supplies then our uh, 14 inch bandsaw we put on wheels so that we could roll it around and it's just a set of wheels on a piece of three quarter inch plywood that is like a little base and then you just push down on the legs and Pick it up, move it around. And a wood rack along the top for long pieces of lumber. Um, there's a lot of small scraps up here right now. This is the uh, flip top cabinet that I made. And I'll do a demo for it real quick. It takes a second to pull it out. So if you want to use a sander, just we can just plug it in and use the sander as is. But if you want to use the other tool, once again, it's on wheels because that's our new thing. We can take tools because the shop is not just Jeff and I. It's a whole crew of people in the summer working on stuff. 
So sometimes we all don't want to be on top of each other. So this way you can go take the tool to wherever you're working, work there and then bring it back. And now you have a planer. So the, the latches on the side over here keep it from coming out. So I've latched this one on and then when I flip it, I'll latch the sander back up here. And so I can use the tool and I'm all done with it. Can, down there. I can flip it back. Um, And then we have storage down below for all the parts for this, mostly for the sander right now. It's a nice big deep drawer. This is a, a magnetized front it has all the wiring. So if we need to get at the wiring, got a little power strip in there to keep everything organized. This was the only thing in the shop that I built from a plan. I bought the plans for it and built it from a fishery workshop. Hand it back to Jeff. And then uh, the sander cabinet is just a basic little cabinet that I mounted the sander to with some storage drawers, miscellaneous sanding stuff. We had to put some rubber feet on it because when it was mounted right to the cabinet, it made god awful noise. Uh, this is our dust collection system and our air compressor. Um, the dust collection system used to hook up to the table saw, but it's disconnected right now which we'll talk about in a second. And then this long countertop here is the back work table that attaches to our um, pulling um, miter saw. I used to have a chop saw and a radial arm saw and I got rid of both of those this, this spring and purchased this on Craigslist so that I can do radial cuts and miter cuts at, at compound angles. Um, but the problem was it's, it's very uh, deep. Um, it sticks out quite a ways. As you can see, my old cabinets were only that deep, which is 24 inches, and these are more like 30. So I had to build a new countertop for both of these guys, um, which is nice because it gave us a lot more room. And I had to build a new cabinet um, that doesn't have its drawers or doors on it yet uh, for this new saw because it was a different size than the other chop saw, so we had to do that. Uh, and then this is the table saw that um, we've had we have in the shop. It's permanent. It's a permanent cabinet saw, uh, but I built this router cabinet. This router table used to have some folding legs and it was portable. Um, and uh, I wanted it to be permanent, so now it now it's a uh, outfeed table for the table saw, but it's also a router table with a fence that's kind of sitting on the back, and then a bunch of drawers with uh, table saw parts and um, router bits uh, along those drawers, and then on this side um, there's an access hole cut and a door to get out the router so you can raise and lower the router where you want to and then uh, I added this power switch so you can actually start the router and then kick it off with your leg if you want to so it's got a nice safety switch just like the table saw does. It's um, got legs like the other one too. I'll show got, these how these work. So if you want to you can pick this up and just roll it where you want so we could we could do routing work here or out in the middle of the shop somewhere, and then when you're done, you can just put it back if you don't run out of your cables. Let's kick the feet up. Now it's yeah, permanently attached. This isn't going to move at all. And then. We built this, you want to move that table? You can just kind of pull it out a little bit. This is a, just a little work table. And this also can go anywhere in the shop. I used to have to set up sawhorses out here in this area 
to set pieces on and it was a pain to set up the sawhorse and then couldn't move it easily. And now you can just roll this out into the middle. And it has little feet to stop it so it can... Yeah, it. anchor it down, use, you know, do the piece, work on the piece that you need to work on, then you can roll it back when you're done. Right back here with the This uh, cabinet was built as a permanent place to store all of our rechargeable tools, which obviously are all DeWalt's tools. So a place to store the drills. Um, you know, to pull them in and out, really easy. Um, some of the larger drills, some of the smaller drills, they're all spaced for That's what they need. And then we've got battery chargers and battery storage and a couple extra um, charged uh, rechargeable tools. And then we added a 32-inch <coughs> TV. We used to have a tiny little monitor right there on the wall. <coughs> and then um, used a Roku. This way we can watch YouTube videos or watch Facebook Live or place, mostly what we do is play Spotify. <coughs> Sorry, I'm got a dry throat. Uh, and then we just did a little bit of organization and cleanup for the rest of the shop. You can kind of see all the LED lights that we have back here too. Um, it lights it up really, really well. So very, very bright now. Uh, but we did a little, yeah, the little drawer like labeling and some, the window got painted white. <laughs> yeah, the window, the window got painted white. So it makes it a lot brighter in here. Um, there's not of empty shelves right now because we cleaned up and organized so much that we have all this empty space. So we'll, we'll definitely be filling all that up. Yeah. The little white cabinet over here has got our audio system in it. And our first aid stuff, but it needs to be cleaned out. Because... And, and it's where we keep the first aid stuff, but it needs to be cleaned out and organized. And I guess if I walk around the corner here, that's upstairs. Um, and that's where the shop bathroom is. Uh, our little Scooby Playhouse. And our little, uh, our little relaxing area. Should I go up? Sure, I don't think it's that bad anymore. All right, so we'll walk up here and give you guys a quick tour. You can see everything. This is the loft section of the shop. Uh, some lots of art and crafts and stuff from from friends, and uh, a full bar, uh, of course. It's the Davis Graveyard, and then call this the Scooby Playhouse. It's just a relaxing area. Some miscellaneous stuff that we've built or that people have built and given to us. Uh, and, you know, the scenes are kind of sloped up here, so you can't do anything really tall. Uh, some of the props get stored up here. Like, some of the demons. yard props, yeah, like the demons on the pillars get stored up here. Our uh, uh, Severus Snape is 3D printed, so he's plastic, so he stays up here in our Freddy the Bat tombstone. Our curio cabinet that looks like a coffin. A bunch of paintings and... Pictures given to us by fans. And there's the little bathroom. It's got some uh, stuff from vendors. Mm -hmm. Big crate that stores a... Remembers the old demon. An old, old demon that we used to have that's in there. Uh, it's a little delicate these days, so he's... That'd be crazy. So it's kind of cluttered up here right now. I but... kind of made you maybe this really neat flickering lights that turn on with the lighting system. So these are all like connected to the... Yeah, so this is all um, LED light candles that have one solid uh, wire down the middle of them and then they plug in on both sides um, so she can turn them on and off really easy. Uh, so we don't have to have battery powered candles for parties and events and stuff. So lastly, um, this is our uh, project board. It usually lists the projects we're gonna work on, which are kind of small this year. And shopping that things that we need to buy that we're out of, some known issues. Usually my name's up there. <laughs> uh, and then uh, reference photos that we use for projects are stored on this uh, bulletin board. And size and proportion, proportion um, information to remember how things work and then a lot of art all the way around it 
from friends and adventures. So that's the uh, that's the yard, the shop. That's kind of everything we did. Um, I hope it was kind of informational for you guys. Uh, we were able to inspire people. Oh, Chris, want to storage for these guys? Anybody knows we talked about these demand rasps for styrofoam. They're very, 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 very dangerous. And they, so we found these. They're just magnets, and now they just sit up here. So now they're not on the cart where somebody would grab them. They're all just right here on the wall. Like in, coming over here too, where we hang the cemetery sign that goes over the cross to the top of the fence. So now we store it up in here, put the letters on it. So yeah, we used to have the letters on the back of the metal door over there. It would bang and rattle all the time. So we just put them up here so they're out of the way. Nice and easy storage. So there's always more to do, but uh, that's kind of it for now. Maybe we can actually build some props this summer. 